welcome to the lecture on hardening and hardenability. So, in the last lecture we had uh, some overview of the heat treatment processes and uh, we discussed about the annealing processes, a variety of annealing processes then we also discussed about the uh, normalizing process. Uh, in this lecture we are going to typically talk about the hardenability uh, in uh, metals especially we will talk about the steels and also the hardening processes uh, or you can say the quenching process and uh, then also we will talk about. Uh, so, first we will talk about the quenching and uh, then tempering processes which is required to induce some softness uh, in the martensite which is obtained because of quenching. And then also we will talk about the hardenability, how hardenability is defined, uh, how hardenability is measured. So, about it uh, we will discuss. So, coming first about the hardening or uh, when we talk about the hardening, then certainly there are many hardening methods, but uh, we as we discussed about uh, others like uh, normalizing or so. So, we will talk about uh, the quenching method, you know that is the uh, mostly wide, uh, most widely used method for the hardening of steel when we have to make the steel hard. So, what we do is normally we go into the uh, austenitic zone and uh, from there we are uh, quenching uh, you know uh, into uh, either uh, you know, water or salt or uh, you know the uh, oil. So, that we discussed even in the uh, last class. And uh, quenching of uh, you know for that uh, what is uh, important is that uh, normally you go to the uh, temperature above the uh, upper critical temperature and then you are uh, quenching. So, the cooling rate has to exceed the uh, critical cooling rate uh, to get uh, a full hardening. So, what happens that uh, uh, you know we are always uh, uh, thinking of uh, having the martensite uh, in the uh, full structure uh, all along the cross section we want uh, the uh, hardening to occur. Uh, so, uh, certainly at the surface the uh, normally you are most likely to get the uh, hardened phase that is martensite and uh, uh, then uh, maybe inside the core it, it may be less. So, that these issues we will talk later. Now, uh, when we uh, you know uh, do this uh, hardening then uh, uh, as we know that there is formation of martensite and uh, because of the uh, formation of martensite, uh, martensite is an uh, extremely hard phase and because uh, you have the transformation of austenite to martensite which uh, uh, you know is by the shear uh, mechanism. So, lot of stresses are developed also you have uh, the uh, cooling uh, you know uh, differential cooling at the surface as well as at the center. So, that develops uh, a lot of temperature gradient and stresses. Uh, so, that is uh, one thing, but uh, the formation of martensite basically uh, you know because of the extremely you know high level of stresses. So, so the uh, we need basically uh, you know uh, to temper uh, you know to, to reduce this uh, hardness extreme hardness and induce certain uh, toughness. So, uh, basically, we use this uh, process known as tempering, which is necessary to remove the residual stresses and reduce the uh, hardness of uh, martensite. So, uh, in the tempering process, what we do is uh, uh, we uh, we further heat to a certain uh, temperature range. So, if you talk about the tempering process. So, you know you have to choose a temperature to which you have to further you know heat uh, the specimen and then you have to hold for some time uh, so as to ensure that uh, the residual stresses are uh, you know uh, becoming lesser and lesser and uh, correspondingly uh, basically the uh, softness is induced or toughness is increased. Now, depending upon uh, the you know uh, degree of toughness you want or degree of uh, you know uh, you know uh, ductility you want or, or depending upon the degree of uh, softness you want to induce, 
uh, you have to take the uh, temperature. Now, the thing is that if you uh, take a, a higher temperature zone, uh, in that case uh, your uh, uh, toughness will be uh, more and uh, if you uh, go to a lower temperature zone in that case you will have hardened uh, you know, you know uh, material. So, like you may have uh, different kind of um, you know materials based on uh, its use like you we may have the use uh, of material in terms of uh, spring or uh, you may have the shock resistance tool where you require the high amount of toughness. So, accordingly you have to choose the you know uh, temperature uh, you know so, so that uh, uh, the hardness as well as toughness can be maintained. Now, uh, apart from uh, you know the uh, tempering, uh, while we do the tempering basically there is one more phenomena which uh, uh, comes into the picture that is your uh, temper brittleness. So, basically there is one temperature range uh, where this uh, uh, once uh, if it is hold in that uh, period in that case the brittleness uh, you know is uh, you know uh, uh, observed. So, that is known as temper brittleness. So, that is uh, the embrittling phenomena which is observed and it is uh, you know in the range of 350 to 500 degree C. So, it occurs uh, while also cooling uh, you know during this uh, critical temperature range and uh, once you do after uh, tempering at a high temperature. So, while you cooling also if you come to in this temperature range then also uh, you can get it. And the reason for uh, you know uh, uh, the this temper brittleness is uh, you know uh, there, there are certain reasons like uh, there are certain elements like uh, you know chromium, manganese or nickel. So, they will be uh, interacting with uh, some elements like uh, you know P B S N S B. So, you know or A S. So, if these uh, materials are present, so they will be reacting with that and, and that leads to the uh, temporary uh, embrittlement. So, uh, basically uh, your uh, these elements if they are not uh, uh, there like P V S N or A S or so uh, or uh, you know uh, like uh, uh, P that is phosphorus, uh, tin, uh, lead and uh, you know uh, arsenic A S. So, in those cases uh, if they are absent then temper brittleness is not observed. So, uh, basically uh, in this case you get the imbrittled steel. So, basically you get the uh, intergranular type of uh, fracture is observed you know uh, along the grain boundaries. So, that is uh, what uh, the uh, phenomena of temper brittleness which is observed. Now, many a times uh, we also what we do is uh, uh, we take the uh, protective atmosphere inside uh, the uh, you know furnace where we are uh, doing the heat treatment and in those cases uh, we may have uh, the um, you know inert gas atmosphere or we may have uh, some other gases atmosphere. So, uh, normally whenever we have the uh, heating or cooling in the normal atmosphere then there will be uh, chances of the uh, you know oxide formation because oxygen, oxygen will react. And uh, so, there are two things which are very much uh, you know common that is one is uh, oxidation another is decarburization. So, the oxygen may react and there may be formation of oxides or the carbon depletion may be there from the surface because carbon may react with oxygen and then uh, that will lead to the uh, product and, and so carbon will be uh, depleted from the surface. So, for that normally we also go for the uh, inert atmosphere. So, we can have inert gases uh, as the you know uh, medium, but uh, that normally you know uh, is uh, uh, quite uh, costly. So, uh, unless otherwise required if you have you are you are going for some uh, titanium type of material which is very very oxidizable you go for the, the use of uh, uh, these uh, you know uh, this type of uh, gases which are uh, you know used uh, uh, for the for avoiding any kind of oxidation. 
uh, nitrogen is also used uh, to provide the uh, inert atmosphere. So, so this is about the you know uh, uh, use of the inert atmosphere. We already discussed about the kind of bath we provide. We may provide water. We may provide the bind branch solution. Uh, we may be uh, so it may be agitated or non agitated. We may have oils also. So, so that uh, you know uh, this is about the uh, bath. Uh, you know so uh, now uh, we will discuss about the um, you know concept of hardenability. So, uh, what is hardenability? Now, uh, we know that uh, our intention is to have the hardened structure. So, uh, as we know harden, uh, hardness achieving is uh, normally uh, by the formation of the martensite. So, uh, if you are able to um, get the martensitic structure with relative ease, with more ease, then we say that the material has uh, quite a good amount of hardenability and if we are not getting in that case we say that uh, it has uh, poor hardenability. So, hardenability is uh, of steel if we talk about the steel. So, it is defined as its ability to harden by forming martensite certainly because uh, 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 martensite is uh, the hard face. Uh, so, throughout its cross section without necessity of uh, severe quenching. So, uh, you know uh, with, so with, with uh, even uh, the mild cooling also medium uh, with not very drastic quenching methods also you can have the formation of martensite. So, the material is said to be very, have, having very good hardenability. Uh, so, in many cases you have to go for drastic quenching and in many cases even if you go for uh, you know you do not go for drastic quenching if you are uh, quenching uh, relatively uh, in, a, in an open way if you use the normal fluid only at normal temperature. So, in that case uh, without much of agitation. So, in that case also you will get martensite. So, the thing is that uh, in that case you say that uh, it is uh, uh, more hardenable. Now, the thing is that uh, for uh, you know for finding the hardenability that uh, how you can uh, quantify what is hardenability. So, for that uh, there is a concept of uh, the critical diameter uh, you know. So, diameter uh, that diameter is uh, basically critical diameter is the diameter more than the critical diameter will not harden throughout whereas, the smaller diameter will. So, the uh, the, the Grossman experiment will is dealing about it. So, what he did uh, that uh, he took uh, the uh, diameter uh, you know uh, of steel rods. So, you have you he has taken the uh, number of steel rods uh, of different diameters and then he did the experiment. And uh, after the experiment you know he has uh, used the uh, quenching uh, process and what he has seen that uh, you know uh, uh, with uh, you know uh, with the different diameters what he, uh, he, he tried to see that uh, how you know the uh, fraction of uh, uh, the martensite uh, you know is there uh, uh, in, in that rod. So, based on that basically he has uh, defined this critical uh, diameter. So, uh, he in that experiment basically the um, four steel rods were taken of uh, different diameter one is smaller than one is more than uh, that. So, the in the increasing diameter size uh, four uh, rods were taken and uh, the length of rod uh, it was ensured that uh, so you have four you know uh, rods of different dia and uh, then it was also seen that uh, the length of rod should uh, so it must exceed five times the uh, diameter so length should be more than uh, 5d so so that uh, you know uh, to avoid the end effect. So, basically if, if you know uh, otherwise there may be end effect also. So, to avoid the end uh, effect uh, the it was ensured that the length should be taken. So, that uh, you have uh, the length uh, uh, is more than 5 times the diameter. So, you have 4 diameter uh, you know one is uh, smaller one another one is uh, bigger than this then uh, uh, third one is even bigger than this and fourth one is even large. So,
So, that way you know just uh, you can say that this is first, this is second, this is third and this is fourth rod. So, you have to, you are taking four steel rods of different diameter. Now, uh, what happened that uh, you tried to uh, measure the hardness. So, basically so uh, and then they are quenched uh, you know uh, and uh, once you quench then um, you know the hardness was measured and uh, what we saw that uh, you know in the case of uh, the, the, the rod which is the slimmest one you are getting uh, you know uh, you are getting at the center you are getting uh, completely martensitic structure. So, if you take this as uh, you know the 54 Rockwell um, you know hardness. So, Rockwell C on, on C scale if your uh, hardness is uh, 54 is uh, there and now at uh, so what we see in this case that you are getting uh, you know complete uh, you know uh, you know right through the you get the martensitic structure. Whereas, if you go to the second rod now uh, you know the cooling rate at the center will decrease. So, in, the, in this rod basically cooling rate at the center will be quite fast because it is uh, uh, thinner as it will become thicker and thicker then cooling rate at the uh, center will be basically smaller and smaller. Uh, so, uh, what will happen that uh, you know uh, hardness which is achieved at the center it will uh, go on decreasing. So, uh, towards the center uh, on from both the sides what you see that you have you are getting uh, some uh, you know uh, hardness, but then it is decreasing and at the center it is even uh, less. Now, uh, uh, if you so if you go on increasing the diameter then you will come to a certain diameter where you see that uh, at the you know uh, center you have 50 percent uh, uh, martensite and 50 percent perlite. So, so in this case uh, uh, this diameter will be known as the uh, critical diameter. So, and if you go for the uh, largest diameter this 4 in this what you see that your st uh, structure becomes you know hardness uh, pattern is uh, uh, you know seen at the uh, you know in, in this fashion. So, in this case you have 50 percent hard uh, you know uh, perlite and 50 percent martensite whereas, if you go for uh, this structure in this case you get uh, only fine perlitic structure uh, at the center. So, uh, this uh, uh, size is said to be more than the uh, critical diameter. So, basically you are getting one inflection point you know, and uh, so, this inflection point basically the inflection point which you get. So, it is the uh, transition between uh, the hardened and non hardened parts of the cross section. So, uh, you know so for uh, for this diameter uh, what you see uh, for this diameter what you see that uh, the microstructure is 50 percent martensite and 50 percent uh, perlite and uh, perlite has the hardness of uh, 54 and this diameter basically you are get, uh, calling it as the critical diameter. So, uh, the uh, diameter at which uh, you know uh, the cent at, at the center when you see you have the 50 percent uh, martensite and 50 percent perlite. So, uh, this diameter is known as the um, critical diameter and uh, if you are taking uh, you know the uh, diameter more than this in that case uh, uh, you must uh, know that it will uh, you know you cannot uh, you, you cannot it cannot harden uh, throughout. So, if your diameter is more than uh, this uh, critical diameter then it will not harden throughout that is the you know. Uh, the concept of measuring the hardenability of a steel uh, which is uh, given by the Grossman. Now, uh, you know you have uh, you use the uh, quenching media and quenching media as we have discussed that we can have different type of um, quenching media. So, your uh, severity of quenching media also is uh, uh, different 
and uh, uh, you know so the critical diameter which we are defining uh, you know in this experiment which uh, we have got uh, suppose uh, you know in this case here. Now, it depends upon the composition as well as the austenitizing temperature of uh, uh, the steel and also there will be effect of the uh, quenching medium. So, uh, you know for uh, so Grossman again defined these uh, quenching medium and uh, you know and also the ideal uh, you know critical diameter. So, corresponding to that quench in the medium. So, for the quenching medium the another parameter which is defined is the severity, severity of the quench medium. Now, uh, severity of quench medium will be basically uh, the ratio of the heat transfer coefficient between steel and medium. So, this will be heat transfer coefficient between steel and medium and that divided by so the thermal conductivity of steel. So, uh, you will have uh, you know the, the severity of quench medium uh, uh, becoming different uh, you know uh, for the uh, different uh, you know uh, for the different uh, uh, quench uh, or so because it will be depending upon what is the heat transfer coefficient between uh, the specimen that is steel and the medium and then you are going to divide it uh, with uh, the thermal conductivity of steel. So, uh, so the ideal medium basically will be the one uh, which will be converting the surface of the steel instantly uh, you know. Uh, so, uh, and also the bath temperature uh, will be maintained you know. Uh, so, uh, at that temperature. So, that is basically the definition of the ideal uh, you know uh, uh, quenching medium. Uh, although this is uh, uh, theoretical uh, you know uh, concept that will be hypothetical because uh, that cannot uh, occur because once uh, you your cooling starts then certainly once you go towards the inner zone then certainly your uh, uh, cooling rate will be changed. So, so uh, for such medium basically pa parameter h will be uh, infinite and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the um, ideal medium will be bringing that um, uh, temperature or the bath temperature instantly steel inst uh, uh, temperature of the steel surface temperature of the steel uh, instantly to the uh, bath temperature. So, um, you know uh, and also it is not uh, feasible because there will be flow of heat taking place. Uh, so, from the uh, center to this towards the surface at a finite rate. So, and also that is determined by the conductivity of a steel. So, basically the two ratio is uh, defined as the severity of the quench media. Now, uh, as we know uh, that uh, this is uh, simply a hypothetical uh, uh, case that is the ideal medium, but in actual what happens that uh, uh, when we talk about uh, the quenching medium like water. So, what happens that uh, in, in that case uh, uh, you know uh, when we uh, do the uh, quenching with water then there will be a vapor blanket which will be you know observed uh, in between um, the steel and, and uh, uh, so a vapor is formed. So, because of the vaporization and that uh, will reduce the heat transfer which will be uh, taking place. So, the heat transfer uh, rate becomes uh, uh, less. Then another factor which is uh, you know uh, uh, affecting that heat transfer will be the viscosity of the liquid and uh, you know certainly more viscous uh, uh, liquid will certainly decrease the you know uh, heat transfer rate. So, uh, you will have uh, oil as the less efficient than water or brine. Now, uh, also uh, the brine is said to be more fast than water. Now, its concept is that uh, when we use uh, the uh, you know brine solution in that case the salt uh, particles which are there in the brine solution they basically explode near the surface and uh, they will be uh, you know so near the that vapor blanket and they will be uh, puncturing that vapor blanket. So, the vapor blanket which is uh, formed near the surface 
that is being punctured by uh, you know the uh, this uh, salt particle. So, that way your uh, uh, degree of uh, you know heat transfers that is increased. So, so that is uh, that is why the NOH is said to be uh, more effective you know uh, quenching medium. We, can, we also have learned that uh, when we agitate the liquid in that case also uh, you know the vapor blanket which is formed that will be broken and your uh, uh, heat transfer uh, will be increasing. So, that will increase the efficiency of the uh, you know uh, uh, heat transfer. So, efficiency of the quench medium. So, this severity of quench medium is known as H and uh, this H has uh, the different values and uh, different value of H if you look at. So, if you have uh, the suppose uh, medium state if you talk about the state of medium and value of H. So, you know you may have uh, air as the medium you may have uh, uh, the oil as the medium water as the medium or brine solution as the medium. Now, in this case uh, if you look at uh, the still you know if the still condition is there if there is no movement you are not agitating. In that case, uh, you see that uh, you have this value as 0 0.02, and this becomes 0 0.2. This is 1 and 2, and uh, for the agitated conditions, this goes on increasing. So this becomes 0 0.04. This is 0 0.4 to 0.8, and this becomes 2 to 4, and uh, this becomes 3 to 5. So that way, what we see is that uh, when we are uh, 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 agitating the liquid in that case uh, you have uh, the uh, the value of H that is your uh, uh, severity of quenching medium that is defined that uh, goes on uh, uh, increasing. So, uh, uh, this is about uh, the severity of quenching medium. Now, uh, the Grossman basically also he has a uh, uh, correlated this uh, constructed this uh, graph where he correlated this critical diameter uh, you know to h. So, uh, of known h uh, uh, you know if you have a known h value of any medium. So, the critical diameter for that what will be the ideal critical diameter for that he has uh, found the graph and uh, the graph looks like uh, this. So, so, in the graph if uh, this is your critical diameter on uh, on this axis and this is the ideal critical diameter and for different value of uh, you know the uh, h. So, you will have h value if it is less. So, it will go like this you may you the h value may. Uh, so, h value in this case will be something like 0 0.02 and in this case it may be 0 0.05. So, for 0 0.1 it, it goes like this for 0.2 it goes like this and for 0.5 say suppose like this. So, it will go on uh, increasing uh, you know it will be 5 and this this way for ideal one you will have the infinity. So, this is your uh, uh, you know the ideal critical diameter and against that uh, you know critical diameter uh, your uh, this concept this uh, graph uh, goes like uh, that. Now, uh, for Grossman uh, basically you know determining the hardenability was uh, uh, this uh, method was little uh, you know um, cumbersome. So, there was another method uh, also to find the hardenability and uh, that was the Jomini end quench test. So, uh, in that uh, test basically uh, what we have is yeah, that we have a uh, you know rod of uh, particular dimension like uh, a, a rod is so you have a uh, Jomini and quench test. So, this test is also you know uh, to find uh, you know it also tells that how the uh, variation is there in the hardness if you take a you know rod. So, you are taking a steel rod of uh, you know uh, diameter 25.4 mm. So, that is like 1 inch and uh, then uh, you have 102 mm long. So, something like 4 inch uh, long. So, in that you have a standard uh, setup and in that uh, what you do is you are with a standard uh, you know apparatus uh, things standardized. Uh, so, you are quenching from one end. So, you are you have uh, 
and uh, this this is the rod. So basically, you are quenching, uh, you know, through a nozzle. So from here, the the water will go. So you have certain uh, diameter of that um, uh, nozzle also. Water pipe will be about 12.7 mm uh, diameter. Jet height uh, is uh, free jet height is 64.7. So that is one standard value. So through that, basically, it is uh, giving the quench and uh, then uh, what happens that uh, the uh, hardness is measured. So, what was seen that uh, and the hardness measured also and it was seen that how the microstructure basically is changing. So, certainly similar to the uh, test which is conducted by you know the uh, Grossman's experiment uh, here also you try to have the you know graph and what you see that you, you have the hardness that is uh, RC and uh, then uh, with distance the um, you know the hardness uh, you know change was measured. So, if uh, your rod is uh, suppose going like this. So, what was seen that we as you go uh, across this distance. So, um, what will happen the hardness will. So, from here, here it will have 65 R C and if suppose this is 45 R C. So, what you see is that uh, you have at certain distance. So, say you have 50 percent of uh, you know martensite and 50 percent perlitic structure and uh, and this variation which is uh, observed you know will be uh, like that. So, so what was seen that uh, you know this way uh, you know uh, uh, this uh, uh, hardness was seen to uh, decrease as we move uh, I mean dist in distance in, in this uh, uh, dimension and this distance you know uh, uh, at which your uh, microstructure was uh, 50 percent Martin site that distance was known as the Jomini distance. So, uh, at, at, at this point you know you have 50 percent Martin site. So, uh, and then uh, you have uh, other uh, related uh, graphs also talking about the uh, critical distance from the quenched end and the critical diameter. So, you have different graphs. So, ultimately it talks about uh, you know the um, hardenability of the material, how much it will be hardenable and basically uh, hardenability depends upon many factors like as we discussed it depends upon the carbon content. It also depends upon uh, the uh, you know grain size of uh, uh, the material. So, that way also the uh, you know uh, hardenability will be uh, changing. Uh, so, if your uh, you know uh, ideal critical diameter which is to be calculated you have uh, for the carbon percentage also as you, as you know that when the um, uh, carbon percentage will be more you will have uh, uh, more hardenability and uh, also for the grain size also you have another variation with the uh, uh, which, which talks about the hardenability of the material. So, this is uh, you know about hardenability and uh, we will have more discussion on the uh, you know features related to hardening of the material in our coming lectures. Thank you very much.